All right, so we're going to look at the tangent function now and its graph. And I've tried to f I tried to make this as uh, painless as possible, making this graph, I, I should say. I've actually done this video a couple times, and I think this is the way I'd like to do it, and this is the way I'd like you to view graphing the basic tangent function. So, so here's what we're going to do. I've got a table here. Uh, I've got some x values and then the tangent values. The, what I want to draw your attention to is I chose to the x values to do the tangent graph starting at negative pi over 2 and then going up to pi over 2, which is different from when we did the sine and the cosine, uh, the sine cosine and the cosecant and secant graph. For instance, here's cosecant. Notice the ones I, I used started at 0 and one ended at 2 pi, right? And these pi over 4s, uh, you know, the pi over 4, 3 pi over 4, when we graph sine and cosine, we started to learn that, like, we didn't really need those values to get the real shape. We just needed these good five ones, uh, the, the five important ones, 0, pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi. But with tangent, it's going to be easier, and you'll, you'll see why, to start at negative pi over 2, put 0 in the middle, end at pi over 2, and then have these, actually have these ones in between, the negative pi over 4 and the pi over 4. <laughs> okay, so let's evaluate them. And what... Uh, what I did here was draw in the unit circle, and the reason I did that was because I wanted to remind you that the tangent of an angle is y over x, the y coordinate over the x coordinate in the unit circle, which is nice because we can get three of these values really easily, right? The tangent of negative pi over 2, so remember negative pi over 2 would mean you start here and you rotate down, so this is negative pi over 2 right here. That would, bring you, that would be a rotation of negative pi over 2. So y over x would be negative 1 over 0, but that's just undefined. Um, and let's do, let's do an easy one. 0, 0 is here. y over x is 0 over 1, which is just 0. And at pi over 2, pi over 2 would be here. Tangent is 1 over 0 again, which is undefined. And how about in between? Well, pi over 4, the tangent of pi over 4 would be, I'm going to try to get a, a straight drawing tool here if I can. I may not be able to. No, I can. Here we go. A straight drawing tool. So pi over 4 would mean we've, oops, would mean we rotated 45 degrees. So we're here, and I want everyone to think what that the tangent of that value would be. Now, if you if you can't do it based on the unit circle, feel free to go out to the side and draw, you know, draw in, you know, that's 45. That would be 45. That would be one one root two. You would see that the tangent is uh, the tangent of 45 is one. Okay. So that would be a 1. And negative pi over 4, well, you'd be drawing the same, I mean, you'd be, you'd be drawing the same sort of triangle, but you'd be in quadrant 4. So that would be down here. And you can probably guess by symmetry what the tangent of that would be. Okay, if you can't get it from the unit circle, That would be a negative 1. That would be root 2. But the tangent of negative 45 would be negative 1 over 1, which would be negative 1. So now we have enough. We have enough to sketch this graph. So at the ends, negative pi over 2 and pi over 2, we have undefined values. So that means there are asymptotes there in my graph. So at pi over 2 and negative pi over 2, we're going to put in asymptotes. Uh, at pi, negative pi over 4, it's, zero, uh, it's negative 1. So negative pi over 4 is right in between 0 and negative pi over 2. And that means pi over 4 is there. And I get a negative 1 here and a 1 here. And 0, 0 is, my, is the value when I plug in 0. All right, so there is a nice, we kind of have the skeleton of this, 
this graph, but what does it really look like, right? Is it a straight line? I'm going to appeal to a nice geo sketch pad. And again, you could also, also uh, graph this on your calculator, but let's just, I want to show you, I'm going to show the tangent curve and just note um, note what the shape looks like. Now it repeats like the sine and cosine graph, but as, you know, as the unit circle rotates, the tangent graph, and again, focus on this here, right, it has this sort of curved-like shape on each of the, on each of the sections in between uh, in between the asymptotes, and it kind of it comes back and kind of repeats the sketch. Okay, so hopefully that should give you a sense of the shape in between, which means we get a graph at looking like that. So there is one period of tangent, and what you should notice is what is the period, right? Remember, the period is the length of one cycle. Well, from asymptote to asymptote. Right, that, that is one cycle. Because if I if I resketch this, I mean if I continue to sketch more periods, what am I going to do? Well, I have an asymptote here, and if we kind of keep the pattern going, after the asymptote, I'm at negative one at the at the multiple of pi over four, and then I'm at zero, and then one, and then another asymptote. Right, so I would, I would sketch another another section and then there would be an asymptote here and again if you just continue the pattern you'll get more you'll get more cycles But the point is, what so we, we sketched a bunch of of uh, per, a bunch of cycles of tangent. So what's the period? Pick any two points that correspond. So maybe like this one. Well, let's do this one. This one here in the middle. When does that point happen again? When does that middle point happen again? Here, and so that's a distance of pi. So the period of tangent is pi. And so now let's talk about the domain. Like in secant and cosecant. We're going to express the domain as being everywhere except where the asymptotes are. So it's everywhere, but x cannot equal where the asymptotes are. So there's an asymptote at pi over 2. And then how much are they going up by? Well, to, between as to get to the next asymptote, we have to go this distance, whatever this distance is. Well, to get from pi over 2 to 3 pi over 2, that's a distance of pi. So if we keep adding multiples of pi, we'll get to new asymptotes. Right? If you add, if you start at pi over 2 and add 1 pi, you get here. If you add 2 pi, you'll get to the next asymptote. If you add uh, negative pi, you'll get to this asymptote. Okay? The range is negative infinity to infinity because on each, on each section in between the asymptotes, tangent goes up to positive and negative infinity values of y. In the x-intercepts, we can describe these. There's one here at 0. And then again, how much are they going up by? Well, the next one is at pi, so the next and the next one's at two pi. So if we add multiples of pi, we keep getting zeros. And the asymptotes, we're just going to affirm this this uh, expression right here, right? This is this means the domain is everywhere except where the asymptotes are, which means if I just not put a line through that equal sign, I'm going to describe where my asymptotes are. So there's where the asymptotes are. And there are no local extrema because on each on each of the sections uh, the the graph rises uh, indefinitely from left to right. So there are no um, there are no uh, local extrema, I wish you just say none. Okay, so there is the tangent graph. Kind of a lot, but what I want you to focus on mostly is to get started filling out that table. That'll get you your middle your middle section there and that'll help you when we do transformations too.